Blackburn Rovers head to London on Tuesday to take on a team they've never ever beaten in their history. Will that change Tuesday night? We'll talk about the Wimbledon Blackburn Rovers game next. <laughs> Again, we have another nice preview this time, counting down to the next one, which is a tricky tie up against AFC Wimbledon at their place. We'll talk more about that match in just one second, but if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, we continue our quest for promotion at the first time of asking, can we continue to put the pressure on Wigan and Shrewsbury at the top end of the table? Let's take a little closer at the match itself. It'll take place Tuesday, 27th of February at Kings Meadow. That's where AFC Wimbledon play. Uh, last season, they finished 15th. They currently find themselves 18th in the table uh, with current top goal scorer Lyle Taylor with 15 goals. The man pulling the strings is ex-Wimbledon player. That's, uh, that, that, this is where it gets tricky. Ex MK Don slash Wimbledon player Neil Ardley. Uh, he's been he's been manager for a few years now, uh, and this is the record. Uh, this is the quite you know interesting statistic. They've played one time and Wimbledon won it, and that was at Ewood Park earlier in the season. It's though is that one of those games that Rovers completely dominated, and Wimbledon got the one chance and they stuck it in the back of the net. So hopefully we can rectify that uh, little blip on our resume and uh, pick up the three points at their place. Maybe cancel each other out. So we head to the Kings Meadow for the first time, and hopefully it will be the last time for a few years, because hopefully we'll be in a different division, and obviously uh, Wimbledon should be in League One. I don't think they will get dragged deeper into relegation trouble, but it is very tight at the bottom there. But anyway, let's take a look at the starting eleven for Wimbledon. I think they'll start the match like this with Long in goal, Frankham, Fuller, Oshiala, Meads, Barsham, Trotter, Abdu, Forrester, Piggott, and Taylor. Let's take a look at the statistics for Wimbledon. Top goal scorer is that man, Lyle Taylor, with 15 goals. Next on the list is McDonald with seven. Barsham's got four. Forrester's got three. Into the yellows, Sauls has got five. Uh, Fuller's got five. Abdu's got five. And Frankham's got five. Into the reds, two players on red cards, or had red cards this season. Uh, one is Abdu, and the other is Forrester. Next up, let's take a look at the form book for Wimbledon. Uh, let's have a quick glance over this. Um, not really good form when you look at the look, look at the past five results. Obviously, last time out, uh, they picked up an away draw at Peterborough, which is, a, which is a good result. Before that, they beat Bristol Rovers, middle of the table team, at their place. But before that, there's a stretch of three defeats, uh, starting with Plymouth, 4-2 at home park. That was on the 13th of February. Before that, Saturday, 10th of February, Wimbledon lost to Northampton at their own place. And then all the way back, Tuesday, 6th of February, which could be a crucial one at the bottom of the end of the table, Berry beat them 2-1 on the road. As for Rovers, this is how I feel they will start the match. Uh, I am I'm crumbling to uh, peer pressure and changing the look of the graphic here and uh, mixing the formation up anyway. So I'm going for a 4-3-3, three, three, I guess, or you could look at it as a 4-5-1. But uh, anyway, Ryer and Gold, Naimbi, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Bell, Bennett, Dak, Smallwood, Armstrong, Antonison, and Graham up front. To be honest with you, there's a couple of spaces on that 11 that could go either way. Uh, obviously, um, Mowbray is preferred, or recently is preferred, Smallwood and Evans in the central um, uh, area of the park. Uh, and up front, or well, yeah, in that attacking area, you could swap out Antonison for Payne. Um, if need be. Graham's, you know, I don't think he's going to drop him unless... They... So there is talk of a sickness going around at Ewood Park. Obviously, Dak was left out of the match against Walsall and also at halftime, Bennett and Graham were suffering uh, some some causes of the similar, similar bug, uh, some vomiting and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that's under control now because if not, then we're going to probably have to see... Maybe there might even be wholesale changes if that bug has spread. So let's take a look at the statistics. Top of the goal scorers is a Danny Graham with 15 goals. He's out and out now as the leading goal scorer for Rovers. But only a couple goals behind him is Bradley Deck with 13 goals. So hopefully he will be back in the lineup Tuesday to uh, help uh, his course for top goal scorer. Meanwhile, Charlie Mulgrew is there with 12. And in fourth place is Dominic Samuel with eight goals. Into the discipline. Uh, Richard Small was up top of there with nine yellows. Then Bennett with seven. Then Williams with six. Stack has also got six yellows for the season. Into the Reds. Bennett's got the uh, unlucky statistic of two Reds this season. Dominic Samuel and Lewis Travis both have a red. Into the form book. 
Rovers are on a three game winning run. Uh, let's take a look at the last five games though. Last time out they beat, beat Walsall at their place 2-1 before beating Berry on Monday Night Football at Ewood Park 2-0. Before that they took on Portsmouth at Fratton Park and won 2-1. Then you have to go all the way back to the 10th of February when we drew sloppily against Oldham Athletic 2-2 at Ewood Park before losing to Plymouth 2-0 at Home Park. That result there at the time looked pretty shady but right now Plymouth are red hot and they are in the playoffs now, would you believe it? Before, uh, it, was, it was only back in December, maybe. They were struggling at the foot of the table. It's just, it just goes to show what a good bit of form can do for you. Look at Red Hot Rotherham also chasing down Wigan in, in, uh, in third place. So uh, it, it's getting tight at the top six. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think Plymouth or Scunthorpe could really challenge for the top two places. I think realistically it's a three-horse race, but results in the next... A uh, week or two could change that. Talking about matches and fixtures, this is what's going to go on Tuesday night. Uh, obviously, Wimbledon taking on Blackburn Rovers. Uh, Wigan are in action. They take on Bristol Rovers at their place. And Walsall take on Peterborough. So let's take a look at the run-in for Blackburn and the chasing pack. Uh, I've, I've indicated here, the, the, I've red-ringed the ones that I feel that are really difficult and we could stumble, stumble on. And also the stars are some potential banana skins. So obviously Tuesday night is a banana skin because there's a lot of factors going into this game. We have we've got a bit of a bug going around camp. It's a long road trip for Rovers, seeing as we just come back from a road trip uh, on uh, Saturday, and Wimbledon have that hoodoo over us. But can we change that fact and maybe get our first win at our first attempt at uh, their place? Obviously, and then on Sunday we take on Wigan. It could be a championship decider. It could even be a promotion decider between these two sides. Uh, but we'll talk more about that when that game comes around. Then we have another potential Barnard skin, which is a local derby between ourselves and Gary Bowyer's Blackpool at Ewood Park. So we've got three tricky fixtures uh, together. Then we take on Gillingham, uh, Bradley Dex, uh, old boys. Hopefully he can ring in a favour. And then we have also, uh, also have another tricky one up against Bradford at Ewood Park. They might have fallen out of form at the moment, but they've got a new manager in there, Simon Grayson. And then we've got another banana skin, MK Dons, who are strapping down the bottom for their lives. And then the second game, second last game of the season, we take on Charlton at the Valley, which will be, again, pretty tricky, depending on where they are at that point, if they're completely out of playoff contention. Anyway, let's take a look at Shrewsbury. Again, I've red-ringed some tricky ones for them. Uh, they take on Peterborough next at, uh, at their place. I haven't red ringed it, but I think it could be a bit of a bit of a, a, a tasty affair because Peterborough is still trying to keep themselves in the playoff mix. They've fallen off pace a little bit. Uh, the first red ring I've got them against Scunthorpe United. They are fifth in the table, so that could be a tricky one for them. Then I see them a couple of stars, or a couple of banana skins for them. AFC Wimbledon at home, Rochdale away, Northampton away. All those three sides scrapping at the bottom of the table, looking for points. And then I've also red ring Bradford, uh, again, at the Va Valley Parade. Uh, again, that could be a uh, make or break for Bradford if they're trying to keep their playoff dreams alive. Then we have the uh, return leg against uh, Shrewsbury against Charlton. I know they just beat Charlton at the Valley, but again, it could be a uh, make or break for Charlton to keep themselves in the promotion uh, race and right at the end of the season that game could be massive for both teams MK Dons and Shrewsbury uh, MK Dons struggling at the bottom and Shrewsbury battling at the top let's take a look at the uh, our probable main threats for the championship so I've got a lot of red rings here and that is due to the fact they have a lot of games still to play they still have three more games to play than us uh, but they take on Bristol Rovers it's not going to be an easy affair at their place so hopefully Bristol can give them a game so then it's the tricky one up at Ewood Park uh, and after that, they take on Scunthorpe, uh, fifth place Scunthorpe at home. And then they take on Bradford City at Valley Parade. So three real tricky affairs for them to deal with. Then they take on Walsall, which has actually been rearranged because of their quarterfinal in the FA Cup against Southampton. Then they have some banana skin, potentially, against Oldham. Again, struggling with the fill of the table. Another tricky match against Portsmouth at Fratton Park. Then they take on MK Dons. Very tricky. Then take on Rochdale. Again, struggling at the foot of the table. Then Red Hot Rotherham. If they're still in the mix for automatic promotion, uh, they'll be a tough encounter. And then a couple more banana skins. Fleetwood away and AFC Wimbledon at home. So if you caught the Warsaw review match, you would have heard Tony Moby talking about the match shortly after the final whistle. Here is a bonus extended edition of his chitter-chatter 
after the match. Yeah, I think so. I think first half we were, you know, at times very good, high quality, high energy, attacking, threatening the opposition goal. Right from the first minute, I think we had our first shot on goal, but um, yeah, we got two in front. We hit the underside of the bar. We had a few other opportunities, that, um, but then really got kicked in the stomach right right on half time. Um, I preach constantly about set players, first contact. We did get first contact, David Rea tried to help it on, but the boys, we didn't react well enough on the edge of the box and the shot it was in the back of our net. And it was a really frustrating dressing room at half time um, because I feel as if we'd have gone in 2 0. I, I think the second half, the momentum would have continued to be with us and we'd have, you know, could have. Could have finished the game comfortably, but uh, it was never comfortable. Second half, we saw that there was a few boys uh, ill at half time as well with sickness, and um, I thought we looked under par second half and, and lacked a little bit of energy and drive. But so we got there in the end, we took the points, and all that matters on a day like today. Yeah, all those qualities, as you see, I think first half was full of real positive qualities, second half was a little bit more when you have to dig deep, um, basically, because we. It seemed to be an energy drain in the team, and yet defenders stood up well to the job and the task. And um, the team worked hard without being as creative and, and threatening as we had been for staff. But um, as you say, it takes all qualities to win football matches. And uh, credit to Walsall for asking questions over second half. Delighted for Dan. You know, it's um, I'm asking him to work really hard for the team, and he's doing that. And um, and when he gets in the positions to finish, he generally does finish, you know, really high quality finishes. I think if it drops to him, you expect him to score, uh, not, you know, rather than hope he scores, you expect him to score really. And uh, he's done that fantastically well today. It's just the balance of the team we've got, which is good. It, it, it's great for me to have some speed to be able to bring on or some physicality and quality finishing or some technical footballers. Um, yeah, and, and just let's just keep going. I think, you know, we've got, 12 more to tick off, That's each week is difficult, you know, all the teams around us won again today and um, so um, that's okay, we expect them to win every week, we just have to keep trying to do the same. Well, I think they were the stars of the day, I think, you know, yes, Danny got his two goals, I think the supporters were the, were the star of the day here at, uh, at the best squad, I think. Um, the fact that they encouraged all game long, they sang all game long, they came for a party really, it would have been nice if we could have entertained a bit more second half kicking into their goal where they were all behind and down the side of that pitch but um, it wasn't to be but um, listen, we, we got there together in the end the supporters driving the team on to dig in really really deep when we had to and uh, we stand in here to a victory three more points and let's keep moving on now you've heard a little bit of what Tony McBride had to say you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say what's been going on on social media about the match well not much to be honest but if you head over to the BRFCS forum, there's a lot of talk going on about the Wimbledon game. So here's some highlights. Uh, Dally Dally said, what a nail biter today. He's referring to the uh, Warsaw game. Still three points in the bag and we move on to Tuesday. What team will be it? Illness permitting, I'd go. Raya, Nayimbi, Lenehan, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Smallwood, Payne, Graham, Armstrong and Dak. It's very similar to my lineup. Instead, I've gone for Antonison and Bell. Uh, for the places in uh, my team. As for Tom, just plain and simple Tom. Funny dynamic to this one with Shrewsbury not playing, but every game is now every game now is massive. Not an easy game in what is in effect a non-league setting. Think we may come away with a point. We have to hope this bug doesn't take its toll too much. Meanwhile, old Greg 86. I've got a bad feeling about this one. They beat us at Ewood and will believe they can again. They need the points as much as we do for every for a very different reasons. Cold Tuesday night in uh, South London with a sickness bug going through the squad. I fear it will be a long, very long journey home. Hope I'm wrong. Come on, you blues. Meanwhile, Charlie Rovers, his team uh, will be like this. We need Dak back for the game. My team for with only everyone fit. Raya, Naimbi, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Smallwood, Armstrong, Dak, Antonison, and Graham. He's gone pretty much the same as me, but uh, with Williams at the left back. Meanwhile, Philip L said this, as has been pointed out on other threads, this is a particularly de debilitating bug. Whilst pro athletes are stronger, fitter to start off with and have constant medical attention for rehydrating and pro probiotics, etc., the speed recovery, they also have further to come back to performance level if they have been so ill as to be forced out of training and all contention since last Wednesday as DAC has been. Wimbledon have some particularly big lads, so not a game to send out any players who are anything less than 95% fully fit. We could simply get steamrolled if we did. 
I'm expecting quite an odd selection to be forced on Mowbray by this bug. I hope he doesn't risk nearly ready, but not quite ready players for this, uh, despite the obvious success of playing Graham and Bennett at Warsaw. Now, despite the bug going around Ewood, there is also uh, the beast from the east to consider. Uh, Mowbray mentioned it in his post-match comments uh, of the match against Warsaw, and this is what they're talking about. There's a massive snowstorm or a massive winter blast going to hit the UK uh, starting Monday, and it's probably going to stretch into all the way through till Friday. So there is the potential that this game could get postponed. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure how how bad this weather or this this winter blast will be, but no matter what ground you have, uh, whether it's state of the art or not, there is obviously the potential of, of games getting postponed in this day and age. And Wimbledon's ground does meet the lower end of the spectrum, so they could. Uh, have a more likely chance of it being postponed. But anyway, some guys have been talking about the beast from the east. Let's. Uh, this is Craigie Boy. He said, let's hope it's not called off with this bad weather being predicted. However, Mike E said, then again, might give the bug in the squad uh, a chance to clear up, uh, which is a good point. You know, if, if, the, if, the, if the game is postponed, it'll probably be put, put back to another, you know, maybe, maybe 10 days or so, uh, which will give Rovers the rest of the week to build up to the uh, Wim the Wigan game on Sunday. However, if it's the last minute dot com call off, then that long road trip all the way down to London and back again would be a bit of a bit of a pain. So if they're going to get called off, hopefully they get, they'll get notified uh, well in advance to um, to stop them making the road trip down. Anyway, uh, Hasta said this: freezing at minus to four overnight on Monday, snow during the day on Tuesday, with temperatures only forecast to get one degree above freezing for a couple of hours during this afternoon. Forecast as minus two by kickoff time. I fear the beast from the east is winning this one. So yes, there are a lot of factors going into this game. Uh, we we've never beaten them. Uh, there's the bug going around Ewood, and there's this beast from the east. So all those three things could you know, mix into a big cauldron of, of doom and gloom for Rovers. But we've got to stop that from happening. And if the game goes ahead, roar on the boys, because we need the free points to keep our promotion push on track. Now you've heard what the fans have been saying about the match. And you've heard what I've had to say about the match. None of any of that really matters. What really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen between AFC Wimbledon and Blackburn Rovers on Tuesday night. all i've got for you today folks if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button and keep you bang up to date with all things blackburn rovers yes the games are still coming thick and fast after this one it's the big one the real big one up against wigan at ewood park but we'll talk more about that when that comes uh comes uh comes around uh, but this one is just as massive really if we lose here wigan can then go top of the table with their superior goal difference because uh, they take on Bristol Rovers. So it's going to be a tense few days. Hopefully we'll come out on top of the table come Sunday when we take on Wigan. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.